Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Guess what's the one thing standing between you and going home? Me. That's right. And the question and answer panel. So I hope that you will stay around for the question and answer. We worked, um, a whole group of us this morning, uh, my colleague Terry Mata and our colleagues from RTI and CMS have been back there working all morning on answers, and then we reviewed stuff at lunch, so we do have quite a few Q&As to answer this afternoon, so I'd encourage you to hang around if you're able. With that being said, we also recognize that some of you have planes or trains or automobiles to catch, and um, if you do have to sneak out early, we certainly understand, and thank you for your time and attention here with us um, during these two days. So we have heard that some of you are warm, so we have made it a little cooler in here. Um, <clears throat> I see a couple people saying, no, I'm cold. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you'll be comfortable for the afternoon. Okay, we are going to get started with the case study. And we have an hour and a half, a little shy now of an hour and a half for this session. And I suspect we are going to use just about every bit of it. We have a lot of the case study here. Um, what you'll need for this is the SNF QRP case study. If you go, if you're an online participant and you go to your day two, part two folder, you'll find the case study, a presentation that's called case study without answers, a case study narrative, and the case study coding sheet. For those of you who are in the room, in your documents that you have in your folder, you have um, Again, a case study coding sheet. It has uh, the front of section GG on it is what's on the front of the page. And then you also have a case study narrative that starts with recent medical history is the first, uh, first line on that. So you'll need those documents for this session. <clears throat> and this really is you guys doing a lot more of the work than, than me. Um, so that'll be great. There are some uh, acronyms in this presentation and they're there uh, on the slide for you. And we have one objective, and that one objective is that you'll be able to apply everything you learn from these two days in this um, to accurately code a clinical resident scenario. So we're going to um, meet Mrs. S. Mrs. S, like Sam, they had to give the girl with a lisp the letter S for the name. Appreciate that. Um, actually, my colleague Terry did that. Thanks, Terry. Uh, our case study um, is about Mrs. S, and she's a 78-year-old lady, and she was admitted to the hospital with right hip pain and respiratory distress following a fall. Upon admission to acute care, she had weakness and respiratory distress, uh, a right proximal femoral fracture, and DTI on her outer ankle. And in the hospital, Mrs. S had surgery on her hip, has a pick line inserted, she receives two liters of oxygen, she has an indwelling catheter, and she develops a stage four pressure ulcer on her coccyx. And after three or four weeks in acute care, her PICC line catheter and oxygen all come out, or all are DC discontinued, and she was able to bear weight as tolerated on her right lower extremity. On December 1st, she arrives at your SNF for wound care, monitoring of her respiratory status, and therapy, both PT and OT. And you can read all about Mrs. S in your case study document. So there are a lot of items to code in this case study. So my advice to you is divide and conquer. Perhaps you want to, a couple of you work on the admission, a couple of you work on the discharge. If I was going to pick a group, by the way, I'd go on the discharge. There's a lot less items. <laughs> Give your friends who don't know it so well the admission and tell them good luck. Um, but anyway, work with each other. Feel free to divide up a few pages each. Um, several of us will be around and we'll certainly help and ask and answer any questions that we can. We are going to debrief in about 30 minutes. So my watch is nearly five of one. Um, so we will debrief at about 125. So I just want to mention the items to code on the admission five day. You can see there's a huge list of them. Uh, lots of GG items. We have the I0020, J2000, and uh, M0210, M0300, and the drug regimen review items. And then for the Part A PPS discharge, we have GG0130, GG0170, 
M0200 or 210 and 300, and then M2005. So with that, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and get started. Again, work with each other. You know, have a good time with this. It's kind of fun. Um, and I'll see you guys in about a half hour, okay? I know that some of you are still working and some are done. We recognize it's a pretty long case study. But in the um, effort to get you all out of here by three, um, we'd like to start going through the debrief, if that's okay with everyone. All right, let's go ahead and start debriefing with the admission and the five-day, uh, and that's with GG0100, prior functioning. I'll warn you that there's a lot of slides here. Uh, we're going to move pretty quickly through them. And there are some Slido um, voting things, too, just to break it up a little bit so you guys will have the opportunity to do that. So what did you code for GG0100A self-care? What'd you code? Three? Do you all agree? Independent? Okay. And how about GG0100B, indoor mobility or ambulation? Three. Everybody sounds good with that one. How about GG0100C, stairs? Two. I heard lots of needed some helps. Great. And how about GG0100D, um, co functional cognition? <clears throat> We have one. Ooh. We'll look at the rationale in just a sec for you. Um, remember, she needs help with medication management, paying her bills, grocery shopping prior to admission. Some. OK, Anne, you want to chime in? Anne. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess the, the bottom line, so I'm trying to read real quickly here. Um, if somebody needs help with things like going grocery shopping because of poor memory, a lot of assistance with medication management, you would definitely code down based on those types of activities. So that was the intent of having that there. Some. Yeah, so probably should have done the other. Okay. Or it could have been some assistance with yeah. these things. Why don't you hang think, out with me? I think, okay. I think we did make edits to that. I don't okay. know if they got in. Okay. All right. We, we agree with you. All right. Bear with me, guys. Okay. So needed some help. Again, um, Oh, wait a minute, where am I? With the um, self-care and the indoor mobility, we said independent with both. Um, stair coding, we said some help. Um, and we have here that the son went grocery shopping, paid the bills, and provided medication. So I would, I know it says some help. So needed more info, right? I mean, you could say, does she need some help? such as doing these things for her, or does it mean some help with those tasks? So um, I guess depending on if you're saying some help with those tasks, we'd agree some help. But if, so that would be if you're interpreting it as some help with each of those things, it would be two. Is that fair? Okay. <laughs> All right, stick with me guys. Come on, prior device use. What did you check here? Oops, sorry. I had A and D, manual wheelchair and walker. Anything else? Yeah. The question is, if she needed complete help with one of those things, would it be dependent with the med management, shopping, bill paying? It would be dependent. And I, I think that's where we were headed, but I, I see that it, right, Terry? It's, so... So again, that's where the some help comes. So is it some help that her son needs to do all these things, or is it some help with each of these tasks? That's the difference, I think. OK.
Uh, let's go on to, and again, the rationale there, she used her rollator and her wheelchair. Let's go on and look at self-care. Uh, what do you think for eating? Five, okay. And how about her goal? Six. And our rationale, oop, she could feed herself, but again, needs assistance with opening containers and cutting meat. And we expect she'll be independent on discharge. How about oral hygiene? Okay. Perfect. Set up her cleanup. Oops, sorry, I told you six. Independent, I clicked it before I asked you. Sorry about that. How about toileting? Oop, our rationale for that. Um, she brushes. She brushes her own teeth, but the helper assists with setup and cleanup, and the discharge goal is that she'll be independent with that activity on discharge. How about toileting hygiene? Where is she currently? Four, yep, supervision or touching. And how about the goal? Six, yep. Again, the rationale. She needs steadying assistance from one helper while she stands and adjusts her underwear. She finishes voiding, wipes herself, adjusts her underwear and slacks with contact guard assistance. And OT anticipates that she'll be independent. Next, shower or bathe self. How about her admission and performance? Oops, sorry. Y'all agree to substantial maximum. And how about her discharge goal? Six. And the rationale for that, she's able to wash her up, oop, upper body and the top of her thighs. She provides assistance in washing the rest of her body. And OT anticipates that with her adaptive equipment and on using a shower chair, she'll be independent. And upper body dressing, what do you think? The mission performance. Five. And discharge. Six. So for her admission performance, uh, the helper brings her her bra and blouse, and then she's able to dress her upper body. OT believes that she will be independent after discharge. And how about lower body dressing? Three. Um, again, partial, moderate. And her discharge goal is six. So um, the rash, oops, sorry. Uh, the, ra the rationale there, the helper threads her feet through her clothes, brings them to the mid-calf, then pulls them up. Um, the helper gets the pants and underwear started down, and then uh, Mrs. S does most of the work until the helper removes them from around her feet. And then she uh, does more, the resident does more than half in that. Um, and then OT anticipates that she will be independent by discharge. And then how about putting on taking off her footwear in H? One, dependent. And her goal? Independent. You all agree? And the rationale there? The therapist um, needed to put on her socks and shoes, but the therapist thinks that she'll be able to uh, independently put them on and take them off by discharge. Okay, on to mobility. How about rolling left to right? Two, substantial uh, maximal assistance. How about that discharge goal? Six. And the rationale, the therapist provided more than half the effort when she positioned a pillow between Mrs. S's legs and helped her roll side to side. And PT's goal is that Mrs. S will be independent with bed mobility. How about sit to lying? Here are a lot of twos, right? And her goal, six. So the therapist, uh, the rationale, the therapist brought both of Mrs. S's legs into bed and supported her trunk. Mrs. S used her right arm to lower herself to supine position, but despite her participation, uh, Mrs. S's participation, the therapist did more than half. And PT's goal is that she'll be independent uh, with discharge, independent by discharge. How about sitting to lying? Two. And discharge goal, six, perfect. And our rationale for that, 
Mrs. S could bring her leg off the bed and assist with pushing up with her right arm. Otherwise, the therapist performed the activity for her. The therapist provided more than half the work. Uh, and the goal is independent with discharge. How about sit to stand? And here are lots of twos in her discharge goal. Six, perfect. And the rationale, she needed, uh, Mrs. S needed maximum assistance from the helper who provided more than half the effort. Uh, and the discharge goal is that she'll be independent with her rollator walker. And how about uh, chair slash bed to chair transfer? Twos again, and her goal for discharge? Six. And the rationale, she needed verbal cues and maximum, or maximum assistance from the therapist during the transfer. The therapist provided more than half the effort. And the goal is that she will be uh, independent with her role leader. How about toilet transfer? Partial moderate. And oops, sorry, discharge goal, trigger happy there, independent. And how about car, oop, let's do our uh, rationale. The helper provided less than half the effort with the toilet transfer, and the goal is that she'll be independent by discharge with a raised toilet seat. And how about the car transfer? 88, we didn't try it because of it, um, safety concerns. But what is the anticipated discharge for her? Four, supervision or touching, perfect. And why is that? Again, we didn't try it um, because of the resident's fatigue here. And um, based on her prior status, the physical therapist anticipates that she'll be able to complete the TAR transfers with contact guard and her role later. And how about walk 10 feet? What was her admission performance? Three, partial moderate, great. What's her goal? Four, supervision, touching assistance. And again, our rationale for that, she walked 10 feet with her walker and one assist, uh, and that assist provided her less than half the effort. Um, and remember, using a device with all these examples doesn't impact the coding. And the therapist anticipates that she'll require walking, uh, supervision with walking 10 feet on discharge. How about walk 50 feet with two turns? 88, yep. And then what's her discharge goal? Four, perfect. And our rationale there, due to fatigue and decreased endurance, Mrs. S did not try to walk the 50 feet with two turns. The therapist is, expects that she'll be able to use her walker and a contact guard to perform that activity by discharge. How about walk 150 feet? Nine, not applicable. And how about um, discharge goal? Nine, yeah. Um, she was not walking 150 feet before her prior, um, her current injury. Um, and additionally, uh, you know, before her current injury, she could only go up to about 60 feet. So the goal is not applicable for her. How about walking 10 feet on uneven surfaces? 88, sure. And what's, oops. And what's the expected goal for her on that? Four, perfect. And again, the activity wasn't tested at the time of her evaluation, but um, it's anticipated based on her prior status that she'll be able to use that contact guard uh, and wheeled walker to go up to 50 feet upon her discharge. And then we have steps. So one step, could she do the one step? 88. What's her discharge goal? Right, it's skipped. How about what happens with seven, four steps, 12 steps? Skip, 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 skip. OK. So remember, uh, if you're on GG0170M, I heard Ann stressing this earlier, and you say, we didn't do it. The admission performance then, if you say 7, 9, 10, or 88, you're going to skip all the way down to picking up an object. And again, um, <clears throat> that stresses that on that slide. Oops. It, 
it automatically, wait a minute, let me get to the, let's see. The discharge goal is good. Yeah, you, you can write a goal. Yeah, yeah, you can okay. skip it too. I think not, not um, the assessment has a skip pattern for goal. There's not supposed to be a skip for goal. Admission performance, there's a skip. Yeah, yeah, the, the admission... The admission performance, as Jen said, you skip. If, if the activity did not occur, the one step, you do skip four steps and 12 steps. You can enter a goal, which I think was your question. Yes, you can enter a goal for one huh? step, four steps, or 12 steps. You can enter goals for any of the items, regardless of. OK, because we had it skipped, too. Yeah, I think the way it was written up, that's why it was skipped. But you can enter a goal if you wanted to, yeah. Harry, can you? Or? Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, okay, so the again, the four steps and the 12 steps are skipped, and the skip pattern takes you to picking up an object. And how about picking up, oops, how about picking up an object? How did we code that? And what's the discharge goal there? We had five, set up or clean up. The goal is that, um, the rationale for that is the PT goal states that at discharge, um, she'll be able to, to um, do so after set up her, her adaptive equipment. But again, we didn't test her at that time. Okay, time for Slido. Does the resident use a wheelchair or scooter? A for no, B for yes. We've got a few votes coming in. like on there. Okay. So what'd you end up with there? Yes? Right? Uses what type of wheelchair? Manual. Sure. All right. And then... Um, how about wheel 50 feet with two turns? The two, and her goal for discharge? Six. All right, now rationale there. When she's seated in that manual wheelchair, she's propelled herself 20 feet and required some assistance to complete a turn, and then required a helper to mobilize her for 30 feet to complete the activity. And the goal is independent, um, and the the PT anticipates that she will be able to do this uh, independently on discharge. And the type of scooter or wheelchair we already said was manual. Yep, great. And oops. And wheeling 150 feet. Two. And how about her discharge goal? Two, that she will still need that assistance. Uh, and our rationale there is that she could only propel about 20 feet. The helper propelled the other 130. And the therapist anticipates that due to prior level of function, she will need help with greater than 70 feet. And again, the type of wheelchair is manual. OK. On to section I for active diagnoses. What did you code in I0020? 10, fracture. Anything else? No. Oops. All right. Um, so she had that right proximal fracture, was surgically repaired, um, and then she had that hip replacement. Um, when the hip replacement is coded secondary to fracture, remember that fracture is coded. And how about Section J with health conditions? 
Again, time for Slido. Did the resident have major surgery during the 100 days prior to admission? Code zero for no, one for yes, or C for eight if you don't know. Okay, I see lots of number ones for yes, and you are correct. Okay, so let's move on to section M. Time for Slido again. For M0 to 10, does the resident have one or more unhealed pressure ulcers or injuries? Code A for no, uh, for zero, no. B for one, yes. C for enter a dash. I see lots of yeses. Not a single no or dash. Right on target there. And then M0300. Um, we're going to move on to, she has that stage four pressure ulcer on her coccyx and then a DTI on her right lateral malleolus, uh, outer ankle. We're going to move on to M0300. How did you code M0300A, stage one? Zero. And how about B1? Zero. C1, or B2, sorry. Skipping, right? How about C1? Zero. So we're going to skip. And then D1, one. How many of those were present on admission? One. Perfect. And then we go on to 300E. What did you code there? Zero. Oops. And then we skip that. How about F, like Frank? Zero, perfect. And then we skip. And then how about uh, DTI? One. Was that present on admission? Yep, sure was. Great. So our rationale for that, again, she came in with the pressure ulcer stage four in her coccyx. Uh, she has a DTI in her right lateral malleolus, and the nurse reviews those medical records to find out um, what the history of those are, what they looked like. And <clears throat> the coccyx um, on admission, it had um, evidence of improvement. It had decreased in size and depth, but the medical record has it as a four, therefore it remains a four. And again, the pressure also on the right lateral malleolus is assessed as a DTI, and she has a surgical site, but that won't go in 300. So we go on to section N for medications, and back to using Slido. So the question is, did a complete drug regimen review identify potentially clinically significant medication issues? And again, zero is A is no, B1, yes, C is nine, N-A, or D is enter a dash. And I heard lots of yeses, and I see lots of yeses. And that's correct. And our rationale, the pharmacist identified two different doses of the same med to address pain were ordered. Um, the combined dose could in, in exceed uh, what she should have a day for ibuprofen. The pharmacist alerted the charge nurse who let the physician know and changes were made to the resident's medications. So, did the facility, again another Slido question, did the facility contact a physician by midnight the next calendar day? and complete recommended actions or prescribed, uh, prescribed or recommended actions in response to identifying potential clinically significant med errors. And that's a Slido, A is zero no, B is one yes, and C is enter a dash. And it looks like lots of yeses there, perfect. On the day of admission, the pharmacist identified that significant med error the charge nurse then contacted the doc about it, left a message to discuss it. An hour later, the doc called back. 
um, changed that order, uh, and that evening the charge nurse noted the order and implemented the change. And that gets us through the admission part of the case study. Wow, lots of stuff there for. And then we go to the discharge. So Part A PPS discharge assessment. How did you code GG0130A? Six, independent. How about, oh, a rationale for that? She opens containers, cuts her meat, uses her utensils, and uses a cup or glass um, to drink liquids without any assistance. How about oral hygiene? Six, and again, she completes that without any type of help. How about toileting hygiene? Oops, six, independent. And again, she performs that uh, perineal hygiene without any type of assistance. And then how about shower or bathe self? Six, great. So she's able to complete uh, her bathing seated on a shower chair and using other adaptive equipment um, independently by discharge, so we aren't, we aren't worrying about that adaptive equipment, so to speak, when we code, and she's independent. And how about upper body dressing? Six, she's able to do that independently. And how would you code lower body dressing? Six, perfect. And again, she's able to complete um, that dressing, the upper body dressing independently uh, and lower body dressing. Good. Oops, sorry, I'm way ahead of my slides here. Somehow I ended up with not the right notes, sorry. I wasn't looking at the slide. <laughs> um, lower body dressing, so we said independent. How about putting on, taking off her footwear? Six as well, completely independent with that. All right, let's look at some mobility. How did you code rolling left and right? Six, lots of sixes. Um, so she was independent, rolling uh, right to left before and onto her back before discharge. How about sitting to lying? Not a six. Again, she's able to um, move from a sitting to a supine position um, without any assistance. And how about lying to sitting on the edge of the bed? Six. Again, she can do that um, without any type of assistance. And how about um, sitting to standing, G, G0170D? Six, sure. She's able to do that using her rollator walker. So she's independent there. And then how about her chair or bed to chair transfers? Six, good. Again, completes those with her walker, but does so without any help. Toilet transfers. Six, again, doing that without any help. And car transfer, four. Okay, so she's able to complete this uh, with her contact guard assistance and her walker. And how about walking 10 feet? Four, again, she uses supervision, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with her uh, rollator walker to walk that um, 10 or 10 feet. And how about 50 feet with uh, two turns? Four as well. Again, she can use her rollator walker, and here she uses contact guard assistance uh, with, for the two turns. How about 150 feet? Nine, not applicable and she was not walking this prior to her injury. And how about walking 10 feet on uneven surfaces? Oops. Oh, thanks. Or supervision or touching. And again, she was able to walk this with contact guard and roll later walker. Good. How about the step, the one step, GG0170M. Yep. And O, or I'm sorry, N, four steps, four, and then uh, O for the 12 steps. 
for as well. Let's look at the rationale. She get, needs contact guard to do a flight of stairs, one step and four steps. Perfect. How about picking up an object? <clears throat> so um, with that one, she needed, she's a five with that because she needed to have um, some setup of her adaptive equipment in order to, to pick stuff up. So back to Slido. Does she use a wheelchair and or scooter? Vote zero for no, one for yes. Okay, lots of answers for yes, 100%, and that is correct. And how did you code uh, GG0170R, wheel 150 feet with two turns? Six, independent. And the rationale for that, she um, wheels herself approximately 60 feet and completes the two turns. And what type of wheelchair did she use? Manual, perfect. Oops, sorry. There's the answer for wheeled 150 feet, substantial maximal assistance. And the rationale for that is, is she wheels herself 60 feet, which is nearly her prior level of function. A helper's needed to propel her the rest of that distance, the other 90 feet, so the helper does more than half the effort. And what type of wheelchair was it? Manual. And then back to section N and back to slide, or section M, like mom, sorry, and back to Slido. So does the resident have one or more unhealed pressure ulcers or injuries in M0210? No for um, is A, yes is B, and a dash is C. We have 100% of folks saying, Yes. And our rationale for that, at discharge, she has one unstageable pressure ulcer due to sluffer eschar on her right lateral malleolus. The stage four on her pressure ulcer has closed, um, and that is covered with epithelial tissue. It's closed, healed. So how did you code M0? 300A, zero. How about um, B1, zero. So we skip. And then how about uh, M0300C1, zero. So again, we skip there. And how about D1, zero. And we skip there. And how about unstageable due to non-removable dressing or device? Zero, so we skip. Unstageable due to slough or eschar? One, is this present on admission? No. no, excellent. How about unstageable due to DTI? Zero, so again we skip. And our rationale there is she has that unstageable pressure ulcer due to slough or eschar. The ulcer was identified as DTI, um, an admission, the stage four pressure ulcer um, on her coccyx was healed. And the DTI had presented as a stage four, however, by discharge it was completely covered with slough and we couldn't visualize the wound bed, so it's considered not present on admission. All right, next we have section N. And the question is for Slido, and it's did the facility contact in oh did the facility contact in complete physician prescribed or recommended actions by midnight of the next calendar day each time a potential clinically significant med, ish, med issues were identified since admission code zero for a a is zero b is yes one. C is 9NA, and D is the dash. So 
see a few NAs, a little bit of no, but a whole bunch of yeses, and yes is the correct answer. And our charge nurse communicated this clinically significant med error uh, identified by the pharmacist on the day of admission to the physician, and the physician's recommendations were implemented by midnight the next calendar day. On day 10, the resident had a clinically significant uh, med issue related to hydrocodone. A physician was contacted. The physician's recommendations were completed by midnight the next calendar day. There were no additional clinically significant med errors. So let's talk about uh, how Mrs. S fits into your QM calculations. Does she meet the inclusion criteria for a skin integrity, post-acute care, pressure ulcer, injury quality measure? Is she going to be in your numerator? Yeah, remember our residents are, uh, it's a Medicare Part A stay for which the discharge assessment indicates one or more new or worsening stage two, three, four, or as um, not unstageable due to slough or eschar, um, non-removable dressing or device, or DTI. So in the, you know, the key message there is the unstageables are in there now, right? And so yes, she does. And again, she's in the denominator. She did not meet our exclusion criteria um, of death or missing data. Uh, and there's the rationale. She is included. She had that one or more, one worse than pressure ulcer. Um, and she had, did have both assessments completed for her stay. And if you can read this slide, you passed the eye exam for the day. Um, did Mrs. S meet the inclusion criteria for drug regimen uh, review conducted with follow-up? So the facility conducted the DRR. Potentially clinically significant med issues were identified at admission, and then the facility contacted the uh, physician by midnight and completed the prescribed recommendations, and the facility contacted a physician and completed the recommendations for every time that something occurred with a clinically significant med error, or there were no clinically significant med errors identified. Um, and then the denominator is the resident uh, who, uh, SNF residents with a, a discharge assessment uh, reported during that stay. So yes, she meets that numerator. Yes, she's in the denominator, so she's part of that quality measure. And our rationale there is she did have the drug regimen review conducted for a section um, for Mrs. S upon admission. We've, there was an error found. <clears throat> and then um, the, the issue was addressed by the doc, and actions were completed by uh, midnight the next calendar day. And uh, again, she is included in that. Um, there are no denominator exclusions. She's in that denominator. So based on that, um, that's really all we have for the case study. It's a big case study. Um, we'd ask you to share any ideas you might have with the whole training or as well as this action plan through Slido. So if you had kind of a to-do list and there's one thing on your to-do list, what's at the top of that list when you get back? What's the first thing that you think is important in order to implement this QRP uh, appropriately? So what's the first thing you're going to do for your, um, to, to make this happen uh, by October 1st? And while you're beginning on Slido, I'm going to get my computer pulled up here for the next session. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, the first thing is share the case study with the MDS coordinator, teach the MDS changes. Uh, good idea.
Please, uh, we did have a question. Can I use these training materials? Absolutely, they're in the public domain. Take them, use them for your staff. That's the idea of this, is that it's to train the trainer that you're able to share information. Um, someone said coordinate with therapy. When I used to train MDS all the time, I used to tell the story when I was a little kid and my sister and I would fight. My mom used to make us sit on the couch and hug each other. That was our punishment. So your MDS nurse and therapist need to sit on the couch and hug each other, right? <laughs> Work together here. Um, that's a worse punishment than death, right, for your young girls who would rather be fighting. So yeah, everybody get together. So lots of uh, education, education, looking at current forms and seeing do they meet their, you know, are they going to help you with supporting your documentation? That's great. Trained admission nurses on the med review. Ooh, good one. Very good one. Um, all right. Well, thanks for sharing ideas. We got some thumbs up over there for evaluating forms. You guys seem to like that one. That's great. So with that, it doesn't look like we have more coming in. So I want to take a few moments now and share with you some resources. And excuse me one second. You have a PowerPoint for the SNF QRP resources. Um, it's a great uh, reference tool for you. Um, I encourage you to share this uh, widely with lot you're with your whole team, um, particularly a couple of the um, help desk tools that we're going to show. So, Thomas, are we bringing up the? Okay. Okay, so bear with my extreme computer skills here if I have any troubles. Um, but what I want to do is share with you the uh, SNFQRP website uh, and just some links off of that. In your handout that's available online, you have this, um, this PowerPoint with a really nice description of each website. And then within that website, within, on each slide, it has the link. Um, it gives you some ideas of what's there. And then, as I said, there's some help desk information, and I'll share that with you momentarily. So the SNF QRP website, so this is really the main QRP website. Um, this includes information about the Impact Act. It also has links on the left-hand side to lots of other SNF QRP resources like FAQs, um, data submission deadlines, information about reconsiderations and exceptions. Um, and we're going to look at all of these pages just very briefly uh, together. We just have a little bit of time for this session. And then the spotlights and announcements are, is just what it sounds like. It's important updates and information announcements about the QRP. Um, the question and answer documents, I just want to share those with you as I scroll down here. Um, you can see, again, the different QA documents are listed there. Lots of different links in these sites are available. Um, for the QM and technical measure information, um, this includes information about the SNF QRP QMs, technical information about the measures, many, many downloads here on the bottom you'll see. All of these downloadable documents, that includes the, um, the table of items used for risk adjusters for the QMs. It includes all the items that are necessary to calculate the QMs and any additional information, again, that you might need regarding that. The quality reporting training page, um, this is where you can find important uh, announcements about our trainings and, and how to register. The materials are posted there. Uh, Web-based uh, self-paced training modules are here. And then other resources. And again, I just want to scroll way down and show you all of those zip files. This is where you can find all the materials for this training. And this is where you'll find them when we post all the e materials with the answers. 
So you will have, um, as you go to train your staff, you'll have options for handouts. One will say like section M, W-O answers, so section M without answers. The other will say section M with answers. So take them, you, you know, the, obviously print out the one without answers to give your folks, and then you can use that one with the answers for the PowerPoint for the training. Okay, so they're all there, they're free, um, uh, no need to recreate the wheel here. And then we have information about the, um, ooh, sorry, public reporting program. So we have background uh, on the SNF QRP, QMs for the SNF public reporting, information about the provider previews reports, procedures for requesting CMS's review, uh, and then also updates. And then we have FAQs, and that's just what it sounds like. There's some downloadable FAQ documents there. Chances are, if you have a question this far along into a program like this, someone else has already asked it, and it's probably right in these documents. So take a look. I'm not saying don't ask the RAI coordinators and the help desks and things questions, but sometimes it's less time for you if, if you um, are aware of what's in these documents. And then there's information uh, for the data submission, uh, SNFQRP data submission deadlines, and that includes the data submission updates and resources. And I want to just share with you SNF QRP, one of these downloads I think is worthwhile to pull up. It's called the SNF QRP requirements for fiscal year 2020 uh, program year. So this is for the current year, right? Because we're in 2018, um, FY uh, 2020 program year. So it gives you the background, what the requirements are for this year, the data collection quarterly reporting program, when you have the review and correct periods and data submission deadlines, and just information about submission, links to a helpful hint uh, fact sheet, and then again, some other information about those reports. So the review and cor correct report, the SNF um, QRP, bless you, facility level and resident level QMs, and then just lots more information. Again, gives you the measures that are associated with this year's um, uh, fiscal year uh, QRP and the claims-based measures gives you the links to the specs for those measures and then the frequently asked questions here as well. So I encourage you strongly, I and mean, this is the one document that I wanted to pull up to really share with folks, I really encourage you to take a look at this document um, and share it with others so they can better understand the QRP. Then the SNF QRP reconsideration and exception extensions. Um, this includes important information about the SNF QRP natural disaster protocol, notices regarding that are specific to recent natural um, disasters, and then information regarding re requesting a reconsideration. And um, the info, there is a lot of downloadable info about the exception and extension requests. In the download section here, I just want to point out to you that you'll see these are actually, you know, here's Hurricane Maria, or Harvey, so the um, you know, wildfires that have happened. So really specific instructions about these particular things that are you know, applied broadly to these areas um, affected by national, uh, natural disasters. So lots of good information there um, as well. This MDS REI manual page takes you to the National um, Nursing Home Quality Initiative web page where you actually have that REI user's manual and other links and other materials involved with the um, Nursing Home Quality Initiative. Um, remember that, actually I want to go back to that page for one second. On this REI manual page is where you can find your appendix um, B of the REI user's manual and that's where you can find your REI coordinator and regional office coordinator contacts. So that's an important reference. You'll also find here current manuals, um, any other updates, things along those lines. Change tables are really useful to use as well. And this is the help website. So if you need help, um, you can go here and you can find all of these different help desks. It says who to contact for what, gives you the email and or phone number 
Um, again, you can get help just about related to anything here. And I will show you some slides shortly um, to share with you these help desks. And the final um, section, that uh, page that I have before we go back to the slides for this section um, are here, and that is the Quality Reporting Archive. And this is just what it sounds like. These are things from the past. They're not currently applicable, um, but they are there for historical reference if you'd like to take a look at those. Um, so with that, can we go back to the slides for this section, Thomas? Great, thank you. I'm just going to move ahead. And so I'll just show you really quickly um, that this is how you'll find the slides where they actually give you the link for each one. Um, we have a couple minutes, so I'll click, click through them. Again, the spotlight's an announcement. It just tells you right on that page what's on it, news, announcements, updates. Um, the training information, again, a bulleted list. I'm sorry, technical information. And then the training, again, tells you what's there, gives you the link. So we just went through these live, so I'm not going to go through each one for you. What I do want to do is click ahead and find you this. Help desks and listservs that are going to be helpful to you as a provider um, in, in helping you to be successful with the QRP. So um, with the SNF help desk, this is an important reminder that the help desks are not secure. You should never, ever, ever send patient identifiable info or PII to these addresses. So what is PII? Things like date of birth, social security numbers, uh, HICN numbers, or health insurance claim number. If you're not sure, always touch base with your facility's uh, privacy offer, officer. So these slides, I recognize you can't read them well here. The intent of us putting together these slides is so you can print them as a whole page slide and put them in like a page protector or whatever and have these really nice resources. Um, so again, excellent for you to, um, to print these. I, we have all the info on these graphics on large slides coming up. So I'm just going to skip through these, show you that there's another one that gives you links for Nursing Home Compare, the Keys Technical Support Office, or CUTSO, the SNF Value-Based Purchasing, the Payroll-Based Journal, also known as your favorite sandwich, PBJ. Um, and then there's one for technical questions as well as um, uh, policy information. Okay. And then vendors, um, it's the SNF Tech Issues mailbox, um, and that gives you uh, the list there. So let's look at these in more detail. Uh, what these help desks will, will give you uh, information for. The SNF <clears throat> uh, QRP help desk is where you can ask about general QRP requirements, uh, reporting requirements and deadlines, SNF QRP QMs, um, coding instructions for the Part A PPS discharge assessment or uh, Section GG. So these are really SNF QRP specific MDS issues and then data reported in the CASPER Review and Correct and QM reports. At the SNF QRP Public Reporting Help Desk, um, here you can find out information related to the provider preview reports, uh, the SNF QRP QMs that will soon be displayed on the Nursing Home Compare website, and SNF QRP that's available publicly uh, on data.medicare.gov. Dot gov, and again, that's coming soon. Better care, oops, skip one. Huh. Uh, oh, public reporting. Uh, reconsiderations here. Um, for the reconsideration request, this is how you can uh, file that. Um, Request if you receive a letter of non-compliance, so how you can file that reconsideration request, and uh, deadlines for filing that request for reconsideration, how you can dispute a finding of non-compliance, and then also requesting information about the SNF QRP um, 
payment reduction for failure to report. Then we get to better care. So better care is where you can get information about nursing home compare, the five-star quality reporting program or system, and the nursing home compare QM data. So this is not the SNF QR, QRP QMs, but the, those that are currently posted on nursing home compare. The Keys Technical Support Office, or CUTSO, um, again, you guys probably use this uh, a lot. This is where you, when you need to get a username or password, somebody leaves and a new person comes, that's where you, they help you. If you need help with your CASPER reports, data submission and data validation, um, help with that, JRaven software, um, and then again, accessing any of those reports. Nursing home uh, staffing, or I'm sorry, nursing home VBP or value-based purchasing, there's an email for that, and that addresses the value-based purchasing program in QMs. And then the nursing home staffing is your PBJ help desk for PBJ policy information. And then for PBJ data specification issues, it's the tech issues mailbox for PBJ. And if there's SNF vendor issues, um, issues with um, technical data specifications, with the VOOT, um, with the uh, ASAP system edits, um, technical questions related to the MDS data specifications, these are the folks that can help you with that. I'd like to mention the PAC QRP listserv. You can subscribe to the PAC QRP listserv to get your latest info. Uh, on the Impact Act program, including but not limited to training, stakeholder engagement opportunities, general updates, QMs, reporting deadlines. And there also is an open door forum uh, listserv that you can sign up for um, uh, program updates and special, um, special topics and things, and that's the open door forum. Um, it's outreach and education open door forum site. And then there's also um, a, another link to take you right to that registration there. So you can scribe, subscribe to that SNF ODF directly through the ODF page or using that CMS listserv registration where you actually can uh, sign up for lots of different listservs if there's different things that interest you. And with that, we are going to take just a couple of minutes and kind of assemble the panel of folks for questions. Um, we will, that's again, just going to take a few minutes to get everybody up here. So I would say by 2.30, right on schedule, we will be ready for Q&A. Sound good? Thanks, guys.